okay, now we, we spend some time giving you the details of, uh, of the master program. Okay, now you should, uh, you should show my, you should see my presentation. So as, as Professor Carraro explained, this is a, quite a recent program because we are at the third uh, edition only, but it actually builds on the quite long standing experience that was developed through the PhD program in science and management of climate change, which, uh, which is 12 years old. And um, just a few words to say that uh, the PhD program and also the master program is, a, is an international uh, program, meaning that um, almost a third of, of our students come from uh, all over the world. So not just Italy, but also Europe and actually quite a significant fraction of students also coming from uh, outside Europe, uh, India, Brazil, China, all countries across uh, the world. Also, in terms of, um, of opportunity, we can say that uh, the PhD and also the master, we can already see that uh, after uh, two edition, uh, is offering global opportunities again across the world. Most of our students find employment in Italy, but uh, several of them also found opportunities uh, in Europe, North America, South America, and other continents. Also, in terms of, uh, um, of sectors, you can see that uh, um, after a PhD program, of course, most of these students go to the academic sector. But actually, um, the, the balance is, let's say, the, the employment is quite balanced between academia, a research activity outside the academia, so in private research centers, but also non-academic activities and uh, job opportunities. And actually, we have uh, several former students who now are working in international organizations, such as uh, World Bank, or development agency such as GIZ, the Climate Policy Initiative, also in the consultancy sector. So there are actually this program is preparing people for undertaking uh, opportunities in, in across different sectors um, of, of the economy, not just the academia. And this was for the PhD program. This is even more true. For, for the master program. So if I have to summarize the, the master programs in a, in a few highlights. So this is a one year program. And as it was explained before, it is fully integrated with the PhD, which basically means that the master student and the PhD student will be following the same classes together. So it's a high level training. For the third edition, we have uh, an updated uh, curriculum with the uh, new uh, courses. Overall, we have 11 courses for a total amount of uh, 66 uh, credits. Also, the type of teaching that has been uh, provided, of course, we have, uh, let's say, more conventional frontal lectures, but also uh, we rely a lot on innovative uh, teaching methods and techniques. We have a lot of labs, practical sessions, which uh, are basically aimed at, um, at giving you experience with tools and software that you might need uh, in, in the future in, during your professional career. And finally, there is also an internship of uh, 250 hours, uh, which will give you another 10 credits. And um, as we will see in a second, um, we are in touch with the local entities as well as global organization and 
already the students that we had so far, um, uh, some of them have, have did their internship in a local environment, some others in a global environment. To summarize, the, the main objective of, uh, of the program is, uh, first of all, to provide high level academic training on the biophysical, physical, as well as social economic dimension of climate change. Give you a broad and thorough scientific background in uh, climate science, environmental and climate change economics, statistics, mathematics, and some basic tools that, uh, that you need to, to, to analyze issues related to climate change. And all this will give you, I mean, after this, uh, this master program, you will acquire a new ability to understand, synthesize, and communicate climate change in its different dimensions. So not only the physical and biophysical aspect, but also the socioeconomic uh, implications. And after this program, you will be able to understand and use some of the tools, methodological, analytical, statistical modeling tools that are needed to work in the context of, uh, of climate change. Uh, we have a very, um, rich and uh, diverse teaching committee. Of course, it's an interdisciplinary program, so our professors come from very different uh, fields. And also, it's very heterogeneous in terms of, uh, of expertise and experience. We have a uh, um, professor with uh, much more experience, Gian Carlo Barbante, Professor Carraro, Professor Giupponi, Marcomini. But also we have many young uh, researchers, which are, if you want, much more dynamic and have uh, a very good knowledge of the tools. So they have a very good ability to actually show you and teach you how to use specific tools. As I was said, saying before, for the third edition, we have a new study plan and uh, we will go into the details of the new, this new study plan in a second, right after this presentation. I will give the floor to Malcolm Mistry for a um, more thorough description of the content. But it is basically articulated in, um, we have one common term to all students, which is called foundation, which will run basically from September to December. And during this period, you will acquire some basic concepts and tools. And then during the second term, you can choose whether to specialize either in climate economics and finance or in climate modeling and impact assessment. So these are two alternatives that you need to choose and which will be covered during the second term from January to May, June. The internship is generally conducted for sure, starting in the second term, but there are exceptions, also depending on what you would like to do. And as I was saying before, we have a connection with local institutes. Here is just a, an unexhaustive list of, uh, of uh, opportunities that we have, and also connection with the international organization. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, institutes and organizations focusing more on the research, such as, for example, CMCC. Uh, but we also have entities such as Municipality of Padova, Municipality of Milan, where it will also be possible to do the, the internship. Uh, we also have international organizations such as uh, Marfand or Mundus Maris, which uh, are uh, international NGOs that works on the management of natural resources. And every year, this, uh, this list of opportunity um, is, uh, is enriched with, the, with new ones. So this is just an example of, uh, of things that you could do. So just to conclude some important information about the, about the master, the call will be published toward the, yeah, we are already in April, so this or next week, beginning of April. 
and you will have the possibility to enroll until mid-June. Uh, the lectures will run from September to May. In terms of requirements, um, the only requirement is a second cycle degree and the B2 knowledge of, uh, of English. The selection is based on CV and qualifications, and there will also be an interview, which will be conducted toward the end of uh, June. Uh, the fee is 6,000 euros divided into installments. Uh, for the next edition, so for this edition you're going to apply to, we have uh, three waivers for the second installment, which would reduce the fee to 3,000 euros. And two of them are more targeted for non-Italian students, and one of them instead is open to, to all students. And the ranking, this will be based on the ranking of the student, based on the CV and the qualification. So uh, now I will give the floor to Malco Mistri for a more detailed presentation of the content of, um, of the program. And after his presentation, we are available for um, all the questions that you have on, on the master program. Thank you and Malcolm, the floor is yours now. We can see your screen, but we can't hear you. Okay, as usual, I yeah. forgot to unmute myself. Now, yes, and now you should also be able to see me. Yes, perfect. Thank okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, or good evening, wherever you all are joining us from. Uh, thank you for being uh, here today. And um, I will spend a few minutes first uh, just introducing myself uh, before uh, going on to the remaining slides of the presentation. Um, my name is Malcolm. I uh, am the deputy coordinator of the master's program. I have a background in uh, weather, climate, and modeling. I did my master's in the UK from the University of Reading. And uh, I have done a PhD in the same program in science and management of climate change a few years back in the Kafoskar University. So in a way, I'm uh, quite closely related to this uh, program of uh, both the PhD as well as the master's. So the master's program actually started when I just passed out the, from the PhD. Um, the master's program has undergone a few changes in the previous two editions so this particular third edition and and it's 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 a bit of a learning curve also we take feedback from our uh, students to help and improve the program structure better to understand which courses uh, need to be uh, focused on in uh, deeper uh, which lab sessions need to be introduced for more hands-on experience and uh, so this particular edition the third edition has also uh, undergone is undergoing structural changes. So what I would uh, recommend strongly to all those who are listening, all the prospective students, is that when you go online on the web page of our master's program, uh, you might be tempted to look into the existing courses that are being offered to the second edition of the program. Uh, while by and large, most of them are going to be restructured and offered during the third edition. Uh, but I would strongly encourage you to go back to the web pages in the coming days once the uh, third edition master's call is announced, where you will get some more in-depth uh, um, knowledge about uh, the subjects, the topics that we are going to offer in the third edition. So here, as you can see on the slide, uh, the first term, as uh, Professor Dijan mentioned, the first term, which uh, starts in middle of September and goes on until the middle of December. Um, these are the topics that you will be um, offered and these are the common topics for all the students. So not only the, the PhD students, but also the, all the master students who will be uh, participating in, in this particular uh, 
topics. The idea here is to give you all a foundation um, to these essential core topics before moving on to more specialized topics in the second term. So since we have students coming from diverse backgrounds, uh, we don't expect them to be necessarily having uh, quantitative skills at the same level uh, that uh, the others might have. Uh, at the same time, we have students from economics background uh, who are more comfortable with topics in um, development economics, uh, for instance, uh, but they may not have an, an exposure to climate science as yet. So the idea is that in the first term, we sort of bridge this gap together and introduce uh, the students to these diverse topics, uh, give them a sort of a flavor. So I will have the honor to actually uh, begin the coursework in the first term uh, by uh, introducing the students to the R programming language, which is widely used throughout our uh, coursework. And uh, this is this is going to be a, a lab and on a sort of a practical session. So um, you will all end up bringing your uh, laptops and we will install the uh, R statistical programming language. And I will give you all a, um, a fast track sort of introduction to this. Apart from that, there are the topics uh, uh, fundamental for your uh, second term, such as mathematics, statistics, um, also econometrics and machine learning, we, which we introduce in the second edition. So here you will, in, in machine learning, you will also get an exposure to the Python programming language, uh, as well as uh, the uh, modern machine learning techniques that are being used. Um, econometrics uh, for uh, students coming from economics background, they probably will be more familiar with this. Uh, you will also get an exposure to pure climate science topics. Uh, uh, the dynamics of climate change, um, uh, climate of the past, and how all this connects to uh, the environment or the climate change economics. So this, these are the six uh, subjects that will be covered in the first term. And uh, together they um, will help you to also identify what are not only your uh, strengths, but also uh, the topics of interest that you will be required to choose for the second term. So we will we will be assigning you even uh, tutors to help you to uh, understand uh, what topics for the second term or, or which of the two branches rather uh, you would be more uh, suitable for, but as well as you may find uh, more uh, in, um, appealing for your future um, career. So this is uh, this is the second term, and uh, this is one of the branches. So th the branch is called the climate economics and finance. And typically, you could say that these are the topics that will be more appealing for students from economics background. But it also it also allows opportunities to those who don't have a background in economics to actually uh, learn the state of the art modeling tools, the theory uh, that is uh, used in uh, uh, climate economics and finance. So for instance, you have um, topics related to uh, the decision theory and multi-criteria analysis, where again, R will be uh, used as a practical um, uh, few practical lessons in R applying to this uh, topic. You also have a subject called um, computable general equilibrium modeling and integrated assessment modeling. So here again, there will be some practical lab uh, lessons. The third is the applied environmental economics and uh, policy evaluation. Um, we also have a very strong um, uh, uh, faculty in um, international climate policies uh, which gives you an exposure to climate change negotiations and how uh, the various uh, climate change agreements have come into effect. And the final topic in this particular stream will be climate finance, which will incidentally be uh, for the first time 
that is being introduced in this edition of masters uh, the second block uh, which is uh, the students can choose between this and the next one is the oops is the block on climate modeling and impact assessment um, traditionally this block of uh, subjects is oriented or is appealing more for students who have a stronger background in geographic information system so who are more comfortable working with uh, spatial analysis tools for instance uh, using ArcGIS, for example or GrassGIS or any other QGIS and R uh, they are also more appealing for students who want to either who already have some background or want to learn more about the uh, and go into deep about paleoclimate, for example, uh, the ice sheets, glaciers, and the climate system, or the chemodynamics, for example, who want to understand uh, climate change and air pollution and air quality. So these are the five subjects that are offered uh, in this uh, block. Um, Together, they, um, they are offered to students in both as frontal lessons as well as lab lessons. And once again, I would like to reiterate that the students will be assigned with tutors at the very beginning, with whom the students can interact and get an idea of what subjects would be suitable for them based on their um, background as well as uh, for their career in future. So at this stage, you might find this uh, too much to absorb and, and you might wonder what could be best suited, but I would, I would reassure you that when the time is right, when the time comes, uh, you will be provided enough support services to help you decide uh, what uh, stream you should be choosing in the second term. And more details will be provided shortly on our web pages. More details about these programs, the faculty. So this will also help you to understand what kinds of uh, topics are going to be discussed in these subjects. Okay. Uh, we'll be happy to take, I, I would like to remind you all, we'd be happy to take more questions on these. Uh, so in the meantime, if you would like, if you have any questions, you can post them on the chat and we will be, uh, we will try to address all these uh, questions today. So I would like to leave more time for the question and answer right now and um, go ahead. So these are some of the important contacts. On the first block, you will see uh, the web page and uh, the, the, the email of our PhD secretary. So the PhD-climate-change at Univeti. And we also have any queries related to your um, academic qualifications, whether they are suitable for our masters and so on, you can uh, post it to the post Lorium email ID. We have also listed uh, the email address of uh, our existing students and former students. So they have agreed, we have, we have requested them to answer any of uh, the queries that you might want to post them directly. Uh, for example, student experience, what they have benefited from this course, what is their um, um, vision after uh, doing this master's program and so on. And this is the last slide that we come to of the presentation. Um, both uh, Professor Dechan and myself, we will be happy to answer any uh, doubts, uh, queries that you might have after this uh, webinar today. So you can please feel free to uh, email us if you have any kind of uh, doubt related to uh, the program itself or uh, the, the, the course fee and the installments as well as the waivers and so on. But as I mentioned, more details will be coming up soon in the coming days. Uh, thank you very much. And I will pass the floor thank back to uh, Professor Dechan now. Thank you, Malcolm. Uh, yes, we do have actually already some questions that have uh, that have arrived and that I'm going to address in a second. Before doing that, I just wanted to show you uh, the website of the PhD program, which is the one you should be seeing now. Uh, so on this web page, under news and events, 
we have actually uploaded the new uh, study plan for the next edition. So if you go here, you can download a PDF with the description of the new courses. Also, to answer one of the questions that was posed, of course, if you're interested in the PhD program, you can also apply for the PhD program. Uh, the call is already open. And as you can see uh, in this box, uh, so you can apply. The deadline is uh, the 21st of April. So you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, there is also a dedicated uh, website for the master program, which is this. Uh, which is this page where you can find some more information um, on the program and also here on this page we will upload the, the registration of the open day the slides and uh, here you will also find the, the public call when it will be published okay so now let me Go back to your questions. Um, okay, so I, we should clarify that this is a full-time program. Uh, usually you have from three to six hours of lectures or activities per day. Uh, most of the time from Monday to Wednesday, but very often there are seminars or other activities running also on Thursday and Friday. So you should really consider this as a full-time um, uh, master program. As of now, we don't have any let's say, weekend formula, meaning there is not the opportunity to uh, follow, let's say, only yes, over the weekend because the program is been uh, held from Monday to, to Friday. Um, the present emergency, of course, is changing many things. For example, now we, we are teaching remotely, so we are getting ready to uh, give lectures and have uh, study groups and activities through the web. But actually, this master was meant to be run, let's say, in Venice. So to have the students coming to Venice also because, as I was saying before, there are several activities that uh, are generally organized either by the universities or also by CMCC, which is a research institute that is also located in Venice, with which uh, we collaborate a lot. There are seminars, events. So we encourage students to, to be there. Of course, it's difficult to predict what, what will happen, but this is the general idea of, of the program. Of course, if the, as long as the emergency persists, as I was saying before, we are, as of now, we are teaching, we are teaching online. Uh, there was also a question regarding the, the background of the prospective student. Um, in principle, there are no restrictions, although uh, we believe that students with some quantitative background would find it easier to follow the program, also because the program has, a, as you have seen from the description of the courses, it has quite a strong focus on uh, modeling tools. It should also be said that in the past, we, we did have uh, several students um, from, for example, from law, anthropology, international relations, so background which uh, do not necessarily have a strong quantitative background, and those students actually managed to do uh, pretty well um, on, on the exam. So it's really something that needs to be evaluated case by cases, and this is something that uh, um, we plan to evaluate during the interview process because then we talk with you and we try to understand what are your, uh, your what is your knowledge, what are your, what are your um, perhaps the gaps that you need to to fill. But let's say in principle, it's open for sure to uh, 
people with a background in economics, law, engineering, environmental science, uh, physics, mathematics, but also, as I said before, international relations. It really depends uh, on uh, the specific uh, um, CV of each, uh, of each person. So these were some of the questions that were posed on the... And I think, Malcolm, if you have anything to add, feel free to uh, jump in at any time. Now I'm just going through the questions to see if there are some new questions that have been posed. Yeah, so I just want to add, as uh, Professor Duchan mentioned, um, we have had a mixture of students in the previous two um, edition of Masters. And uh, this is probably the most common question that we have uh, been asked. Uh, if uh, the student says that if I have a back, if I have a background from a non-quantitative uh, subject, am I suitable for your program? Um, as as we discussed and as we showed in the slides earlier, that we we provide enough uh, introductory topics in the first term uh, to help the students catch up uh, with those topics that they are not familiar or, or have studied in the past long time back and they need to brush up again. So there is there is absolutely no restriction on the kind of background that we expect from the students prehand. Um, having said that, this, the sooner you think that you are going, to, you're, you're interested in this program and you would like to enroll and if you don't have a quantitative background, uh, we always recommend those students to uh, start taking some, uh, uh, going through some online notes on the basic mathematics, for instance, on linear algebra, calculus, uh, and so on, because these are some of the fundamental topics, uh, basic statistics, probability theory, for instance, that are part of your coursework, uh, irrespective of which uh, block of uh, the courses you take during the second term. So we strongly recommend to the students beforehand that while you will have the exposure of these topics in the first term as uh, preparatory courses, but uh, those without a quantitative background should start uh, reading up some material on their own before they um, begin the course in September. Yes. Um, there was another question. So uh, there, will, there will be only one window uh, during which the call would be open and when you during which you will be able to apply and this will run as I said before from April to June so that will be the only opening that we will have and uh, we also have the opportunity to follow individual courses so throughout the year um, you decide not to enroll into the full program, you still have the opportunity to take uh, uh, individual courses. And for that, you can apply, um, I think, any time uh, during the year. Um, yes. Actually, we, so there is a question whether we plan a similar webinar for the PhD program. And uh, the answer is no, simply because, as we said before, uh, a couple of times already, um, the study program, the first year is really is the same for the PhD program and for the master program. So the, the description that we that you follow today, the, the courses that has that have been described today, are exactly the same that the PhD students are going to take. The difference is that after the first year of uh, coursework, the PhD student will have uh, three additional years for, for the research. If you want to apply for, the, you cannot 
apply for also for the PhD program. There, there are no fees for the program, meaning that we only take a PhD student who receive uh, uh, the scholarship. And, uh, and this year we have uh, six uh, scholarship for the PhD program. So again, there will be an evaluation process, a ranking of students, and the first uh, six uh, student, the student ranking first will, will be granted a full scholarship for four years. So basically, there is not a possibility to do the PhD program without the scholarship. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we do have a, a waiver also for Italian students applying to the master program. Uh, we will have three, let's say, three scholarships. For two of them, we will give priority to non-Italian students, whereas one of them will be open to all students, irrespective of nationality. Should the, the scholarship meant for non-Italian students remain unassigned, they will then be uh, assigned to Italian students. And also for other funding opportunities, because, okay, these are waivers that we provide within the program, but there are other um, support facilities opportunities which you can find uh, on the website of the master program mm. okay just having a quick look through to the questions as i said before uh, this webinar is going to be um, was registered so we are going to post the registration on the website of the master we will also go through the questions, all of them, and um, post uh, our reply to the question also on the website of the master. Just a final check whether there is any urgent matter that would need to be addressed now. If I may also add uh, something about the internship, uh, another common question that we are often asked is, um, do we do we provide any sort of a support service for helping the students to um, uh, begin the internships with the um, institutes that we have affiliations with? So yes, we do have some institutes which whom we already have internships program running for our existing students. Uh, beyond that, uh, the students are welcome to propose uh, destinations for their internships. And uh, there is a certain formality to be completed by us with the organization, but the students are free to propose uh, organizations within and outside Italy if they would like to carry out the internship program. That's right. Okay, then, okay, I would, uh, I would end uh, this presentation here. As I said, we are available for further questions uh, through email. Uh, I would like to thank you again for, for being with us. And uh, I look forward to meeting you in, uh, in September.